Countess Chateaubriand knew that his 13-year-old wife was incredibly beautiful. Rumors of her beauty had spread throughout France, and even Francis I himself demanded that the Count bring his wife to court. According to the king, the most beautiful ladies should be among us. Countess Chateaubriand was older than his wife by nine years. When Francoise de Foy was ten years old, the Count kidnapped his bride. With her consent, of course. In ten years Francoise was already engaged to the Count, in thirteen years old she gave the groom a daughter, and a year later officially became his wife and Countess de Chateaubriand. The authorized age for the marriage of a Catholic bride was twelve years old. Jean de Chateaubriand was happy. He carried his wife in his arms, because he got such a treasure. The couple lived quite happily in Chateaubriand, not knowing the sorrows and sorrows. And young Francoise de Chateaubriand did not even suspect that somewhere nearby is a place where every beautiful girl can become an unofficial French queen. Rumors of Francoise's beauty soon reached the king of France. Francis was intrigued. The athletic monarch knew how to appreciate a woman's beauty. Soon the king ordered Count Chateaubriand to present his wife to the court. Is it possible to hide in his estate charming girl, as if a prisoner? Francis asked. Count Chateaubriand was disappointed. He realized that in front of the charming Francis rare woman could resist. Any lady of the court dreamed of becoming a favorite of the king of France. There was even a legend. Jealous Count came up with a trick with a ring to circumvent the order of the monarch. Chateaubriand warned his wife in advance. If the letter came to her letter will not be a ring, then you need to be in the castle, and if the letter comes with a ring, then urgently go to court. Francoise had grown up by then and understood a little of women's little tricks. With a couple of gold coins, she bribed the servants to steal the ring from her husband. According to another version of the legend, a copy of the ring was sent by Francis himself. And so the stunned Count Chateaubriand was disappointed to see a newly arrived carriage from Chateaubriand at the entrance to the royal palace. Luxurious 20-year-old girl made a sensation in Amboise. Francoise charmed all the courtiers with her youth, beauty and good-naturedness. All the noble cavaliers paid attention to the miniature brunette with snow white, glossy skin and almond-shaped, cunning eyes. Like a fox. But the aristocrats did not dare to court the young lady. They knew she was the king's prey. Francis immediately fell in love with this enchantress. Francoise surrendered to the king not immediately. She kept him at a distance for a while. She hoped that her inaccessibility would only bind the monarch more strongly to her. She was right. But one day she gave in. Francis was incredibly courteous, indulging the Countess de Chateaubriand's every whim. Soon Francoise noticed that at the sight of the king she felt a slight tremor in her soul. Had she fallen in love? And all she had planned to do was to get jewelry and a position in society. Soon the Countess de Chateaubriand became the official royal favorite. Her husband was devastated. He was understandable. He had been saving his wife from this very moment. As moral compensation, Count de Chateaubriand received ranks, lands and a small pension. But does that compare to his wife's fidelity? I think not. I don't hold Francoise up as a paragon of decency. She was not faithful to her husband, nor was she to the king. Francis was not embarrassed by this. He himself liked to spend time in the company of other charming court ladies. Francoise was the royal favorite for a long ten years. She had a very strong influence on the king, but she did not care about politics. Such a strong attachment of Francis did not like his mother Louise of Savoy. It was with the help of Louise of Savoy that Francoise soon lost favor with the king. He switched to a younger court lady, the 18-year-old and de Pisla. The rivalry between the two women lasted about two years. Francoise backed down. She fought not for power, but for love. Francis I offered Countess Chateaubriand a supporting role. She refused. She realized she'd lost. Francoise retired to her husband's estate. This time the Count was disappointed that his wife lost the place of the royal favorite. In ten years, Chateaubriand had enriched himself quite well at the expense of the French crown. A few years later, Francis passed with his entourage Chateaubriand estate, which is located west of Paris. Before the eyes of the king flashed ten years of life with Francoise. He loved her, after all. Following the impulses of his soul, Francis decided to stay at the Chateaubriand estate for a few days. The days dragged on for three weeks. During this time, the king renewed his relationship with Francoise and gave her husband some land. 
Francis knew how to take care of his lovers. And de Pisla was soon married to the Duke d'Etamp. The Duke himself was given such a high title only by the grace of the monarch. I assume that the king wanted his favorite to bear the title of Duchess. Thanks to the title of Duchess it was possible to use the right of the stool and the red veil, that is, could drive a carriage directly to the entrance to the palace, not just to the gate. I think and didn't like the king, unlike Francoise, and loved power, position and money. One day, at her request, the king decided to take away all of Francoise's nicely engraved jewelry. In my opinion, this way the new favorite of the king was trying to spite Francis's old lady-in-waiting. But Francoise Chateaubriand was smarter than that. Ten years at court had taught her how to respond elegantly to every barb from the outside. She melted down all the jewelry she'd been given into gold bars. The countess didn't want to give the king the engraved jewelry. She could not bear to think that another person would wear jewelry with words once addressed to her. Francis I was surprised by his former lover's action. He felt ashamed. I have acted like a petty man, Francis thought. As an apology, he sent Francoise back all the gold bars as well as money equal to the value of the treasures. Francoise Chateaubriand was quite a harmless royal favorite. She did not interfere in politics and was not a prominent figure of the 16th century. Francoise can be sympathized with, because she found happiness with the king, but with her husband met her death. According to one version, it was the jealous Count Chateaubriand who, five years after the king's last visit, decided to get even with his wife. 